So hello everybody, I'm David Eschiavone, I'm a PhD student at ATH Zurich, and today I'm here to talk to you about the open source pulp cores. So our research goal is building energy efficient hardware, and pulp is an energy efficient Internet of Things device. Pulp stands for parallel ultra low power. Ultra low power as Internet of Things devices are usually battery powered, so you don't have a lot of power to burn. And we achieve that by leveraging technology and um, near threshold computation. And uh, it's parallel, so to meet performance constraints that we may have. So what do we do with PULP? We do near sensor computation. So here you see we have different kinds of sensors. They have different bandwidth and computational requirements. So PULP is programmable. So you can program PULP for your own uh, algorithm. And uh, to make it that happen, we build actually several uh, cores. So our cores are RISC V based since the end of 2015. We actually offer different kind of cores depending on, on the, of your uh, uh, computational requirements. We have low cost core, so optimized for the area and the power. Then we have our worker score, which, which is risky. I presented it as in the fourth workshop, RISC V workshop, and it is DSP enhanced. Recently, we also extended RISCA with the fl floating point capabilities if your application needs more precision. And this is the 32 bit um, set of our cores. And recently, we are also looking at 64 bit implementations able to run Linux. So let's zoom in in our cores. So this is RISCA, is our most famous core. It's a four stage pipeline uh, in order RISC core. It implements IMC extension and optionally the floating point. It is, it, the area is from 40 to 70 kilogates depending on the floating point unit. And we have quite a high core mark per megahertz. It's really optimized for IPC. And it has been extended, as I said, for uh, data computation centric applications. So packet seamed, fixed point, bit manipulation, hardware loops, auto increment, load and store. And uh, this core actually has been taped out several times. We have different working chips in uh, 65 and 28 nanometers. Recently, we taped out also in TMC 40 low power. And we, at the end of the year, we are going to tape out with Global Foundry 22 FDSOI, as you may know. And so it is extensible with floating point. It has been extended with privilege uh, machine and user mods to provides a little bit of security, and it is completely available on GitHub. You can go there and pull it and command it and, uh, and use it. So let's zoom in and let's give an example of our pulp extensions. So let's assume you want to add two vectors coming from a sensor that is 8-bit in this example. You may have, I wrote it, but you may have some assembler like this as an outcome of this loop. So with Auto increment load is so you can fuse the load instruction with the, with the increment of the pointer of these vectors. And with that loop, you actually uh, remove the overhead of branches with comparison, et cetera. And so actually you increase, you not only reduce the code size, but you actually increase your throughput. And with packet seamed, what you do is in one register, you put more elements. So in 32, you can fit four elements. And then you compute four additions, and you store four results back. So the next core I want to talk about, this is newer. It's zero risky. It's actually meant for control task applications, because with risky, you actually, if you have if then as task with risky, you don't leverage really a lot the, all the extension with DSP, dot products, uh, hardware loops, et cetera. So we actually listen to your feedbacks. We build a core which is way, way smaller. If, uh, as you can see here, it's at least half of risk in, in its biggest version. It is an AMC, but can also be used with only 16 registers, and you can also remove the hardware meant for multiplications, et cetera. With the IMC version, you have a 2.44 um, core mark per megahertz. This has been compiled and run in Palpino with GCC. <laughs> And as you know, it's optimized for the area. So we highly exploit high resource sharing, 
For instance, multiplications are done in a multi-cycle fashion. Uh, the divider is one bit divider, so the IPC is not as high as in RISC, but, but it's okay because you, you don't need a lot of uh, uh, data path-oriented uh, uh, functions for the, you, you don't use this core for that. Has been taped out already in 65 and 40, and it's also available in, on GitHub. Has been pushed in August, July, and uh, the 16-bit version without the hardware um, uh, resources for the M extension is called MicroRisk. So it's still the same core with some parameters, and we just call it MicroRisk when it's the minimum amount of error, which is less than 12 kilobytes. Then this is our last core. It's a 64-bit. Um, RISC 5 core, it implements the IMC, it's six pipeline stages, it's out of order execution, um, it has all the ingredients to, to be fast, so tightly integrated caches with da data instruction caches. We want to tape it out in um, FD SY 22 nanometer global foundry, and we, the goal is plus one gigahertz, and it has all the ingredients to run, to boot and run Linux, so um, privilege instruction, M, S, U, et cetera, is fully RIS-5 compliant. As you see, the area is way, way bigger. Um, pulp is not only hardware, so we have a lot of software running around Pulp. So we have a virtual platform built in C++ and Python for configuration and uh, an instruction set simulator. Uh, this virtual platform try to be as close as possible to the hardware uh, performance in terms of time accuracy, but it's way, way faster to run. We, in all our PAL platform, we provide debug supports, and we also actually have a bridge to s translate GDB command in JTAG request to our platform. And we also have profiling tool as, um, as this one to see if we're your application is uh, losing time or is gaining, et cetera. So during the last, during the fourth RISC-5 workshop, I've been asked several times, but how do you verify your core? So together with Polytechnic of Turin, we actually uh, came up with a little project. So they build a genetic uh, program generator that it's an optimizer. So they try to optimize some metrics. In this case, our metric is the code coverage, so we try to to stimulate all the lines in, in, the, in the very low code of our course. And then we test it against the, our golden model, that in this case is our ISS platform with all the extension. For instance, for RISC, the ISS implements all the dot product, ve vector extension, the SP capabilities, et cetera. And we perturb the execution of this uh, random program with interrupt request, instruction stall, data stalls, and this and this actually came because once we put Risky and the other cores on GitHub, we actually, other people start using it in other contexts, so we received bugs that we've never seen in our context, so we, have, we gained a lot putting our hardware open source. And, uh, and this should, let's say, cover more and more and more cases that we may not see in our pulp platform. So pulp or pulpino is not really a toy. There are several companies that actually are using it. Some of them are announcing products based on Pulp. Some others are using it for internal exploration. Some others are using it for uh, educational purpose, etc. And we have several universities that actually are using our core, maybe close to our research interest, or maybe not that much, but they are still using our IPs. But we are always looking for other collaborations, feedbacks, bug reports, um, donation, IPs, mm, in, every in every form. <laughs> OK, to conclude, this is our last uh, PAL platform. This is the block diagram of it. So you, we have a cluster with several cores and a shared FPU. This, this PAL cluster is called Mr. Wolf, as we name our chip uh, based on the Pulp Fiction movie. <laughs> also, here in the T-shirt. <laughs> and we have eight cores with a shared FPU, shared instruction cache, DMA, uh, tightly coupled L1, so we don't have caches in the L1 memory. And in the other side, we have a new fabric controller um, 
a single core platform. So in this configuration, we use the RISCI to do DSP uh, or to do data computation centric algorithms. So you have parallel uh, RISC 5 cores doing convolution, FFT, etc. And in the other side, we have another voltage and frequency domain that is handling control oriented tasks. That's why we use zero risk in that case. But it's completely configurable depending on your application, your performance, power, and area requirements. So the good news is that we release it. We want to release this part of the chip at the beginning of the next year, once we finish the tape out. And um, it includes the new micro DMA system, which is a, a, an IO subsystem, very efficient in terms of performance and um, energy. You can plug in and plug out your favorite cores that are already available on GitHub. A new interrupt controller, debug, new sets of peripherals, and a completely new SDK, completely different from the one that you may be familiar with in Palpino. And we just have to finish the tape out, and then we <laughs> push it open source. So that's it. Thanks a lot for your attention. And I'm around for questions. <laughs>